I've heard people say that too much of anything is not good for you, baby. But I don't know about that. There's many times that we've loved and we've shared love and made love. Okay, tubers. Well, it's Monday night again. How far did we get here? We didn't get very far. So what have I done since I last talked to you? Well, let's get you updated. <clears throat> uh, pulled the plastics off. So it's fairly obvious the plastics are off. It gives me a little uh, better vantage point to pull the clutch cover off and then pull the clutch off. We'll get that done tonight. Get the clutch off and get the carburetor off, which, you know, there it is. Not hard to get to now. Everything's right in the open with the back fenders off. So with the back fender off, um, and the muffler off, you get to see basically everything. So, so here, let me give you, let me show you something that I hadn't shown you before. So generally there should be virtually no up and down movement between the, um, crank rod and the crank pin. And even in the wrist pin, there should be, it should be almost be imperceptible. Is that a word? Yeah, imperceptible. <laughs> you shouldn't be able to perceive any movement. Although there might be, you know, probably a max two or three thou in there between the um, wrist pin and the crank pin. But anyway, here, check this out. Just gonna pull this up. Oh, see if I can hold this and pull at the same time. Sorry, guys. Hear that? Tough to tell if that's the connecting rod pushing down on the crank pin or if that's the wrist pin tapping against um, the bore on the, on the piston. I have a suspicion it's actually the, um, the wrist pin, but either way, gives you a little further information as to what's happening there. That shouldn't be there, just so you know. Uh, what else before we get cracking on this? I actually just fired up the barbecue. I'm going to cook some deer sausage and uh, have that for my supper tonight before I get really moving on this. But as you can see with the fenders, you know, with the fender pulled off, the plastics, a lot easier to get to everything. Um, the um, secondary jack shaft chain case, that's all separate from the motor. So the only thing holding the, basically the only thing holding the motor to the, um, the jack shaft and secondary and, and chain case is the belt, basically. That's the only thing that binds the two together. So, um, got the other motor here. Uh, checked its compression. It's in 105, 110. Uh, a lot of you may think that compression for, for a 250 is low. And I would generally tend to agree with you if it was liquid cooled, but generally on these air cooled motors, these um, two strokes, they run a little lower compression. You have a little more um, a little more leeway, so they don't heat up as fast and uh, and things like that. Brand new compression on this motor. Actually, these rings they may not be even totally seated yet. Brand new compression is uh, uh, 115, so we're not that far out. You know, 105, 110. We're getting pretty close to it. So, um, anyway, at that, I'm going to have something to eat, and then I'm going to check back with you in a bit, and uh, I'll take you step by step on how we're going to pull that primary clutch off. And I'm sure some of you have used pullers, some of you have never used pullers, some of you maybe don't know how to use a puller. So, um, so let's get to that and uh, catch you here in a little bit. Oh yeah, what are we going to do today? Um, Gonna do a, a puzzler today. It's not for anything, it's not for a prize, it's just for a little bit of fun. Yeah, so here's the caveat on the puzzler. Yeah, you can look it up on the internet and find the answer, but you're just cheating yourself. This is not for a prize or anything. I don't care if you think you're smart or you're or you're not very smart or or what, but it's just more for a bit of fun, so and you can answer it on next week's video. Or sorry, you can answer it on this week's video, and then I'll let you know if you're right on next week's video. And yeah, if you want to cheat and and your ego is is not able to to handle being wrong, then go ahead and look it up online. <laughs> 
But anyway, I gotta get to my deer sausage and uh, and get something in me. I just got home from work, so I'll uh, catch up with you in a bit. All right, guys. So there's your secondary, priming your secondary clutch cover off. Keep your screws and bolts where you find them. That's usually how I do things. I just keep everything with what it's supposed to be with and then it's a lot easier to find all your stuff later on instead of labeling every single thing. So what I've done ahead of time is I have, here, I'll just do it for you in real time. How's that sound? So what I would do is <clears throat> hold the rear brake which pinches the, the jack shaft. I'll show that to you guys. Just put a zip tie around if you don't have a locker on it. <clears throat> Easy for you at all, is it? And that makes the secondary, that traps the secondary basically. So turn the inside shiv in the secondary, push your belt down into it. <clears throat> Once you get your belt down into it, you can remove the belt. Like so, and there's your belt off. If you're bothered, wear gloves. I'm not going to bother wearing gloves, obviously. So that leaves us with our primary clutch to take off. <laughs> wow, you can feel a lot of roughness in that. So, there you can hear that. You guys hear that? That's the play in the uh, connecting rod and wrist pin and uh, crank pin. Yeah. That motor is pretty well done for. Okay, so I'm going to get a um, ratchet, take the clutch bolt out, then we'll have to use a puller on the rest of it. So let me get to that and turn it back on. Okay, so there are all sorts of holders on the market for holding the primary. I just happen to have a wooden handled, what is that, wear brush. That'll work for this. I'll span as many of the towers as possible. And take that bolt out. That won't allow the clutch to come off. That just take. That's just basically just a retainer bolt. <clears throat> that threads out. Don't lose any of the washers because you'll need them for spacing later on. The insert in there. There we are. That should be it. Again, don't lose your parts. Keep it with your other clutch parts. So next we need to run our, <clears throat> so I'm just walking around grabbing my stuff here all at the same time. Now you run your puller in, so that's your puller. Basically how the puller works is like your primary clutch bolt, this is male threaded, threads in, catches the female threads, and then this part here pushes the end against the end of the crank so it both pushes and pulls out so pulls the clutch off at the same time. On the end here put a little bit of grease. I'm a little bit against a little bit well I wouldn't say a little bit I would say a whole lot against using an impact. If you don't have to use an impact then don't use it. I would much prefer that you used heat on the shaft you know, if you had a heat gun just heat up that uh, the center between the two. Heat up the center between the uh, between the two sheaves. You want to clean that grease off when you're done with it. That just helps lubricate the puller at the same time. Let me just grab a socket and then I'll have to switch this around because I'm then turning it in instead of turning it out. So. Let me shut you off while I grab a socket and I'll turn you back on again here in a little bit. Okay, let's get the drive on. Now preferably this just pops and it comes off. Like I said, I don't want to have to use heat on it. And I really don't want to use the impact. I really want to pound against, well, in this case I guess it doesn't really matter if I pound against the end of the crank. But in most cases you don't and there you go. You heard it pop, so that's it off. You shouldn't have to reef on it, you shouldn't have to use an impact.
thread your puller out. <laughs> take your uh, take your wire brush out. There you go. A lot of cases these will be marked on the crank, but in this case there's no markings on the crank. You just hope for your clutch to be to be, to be balanced. The clutch, however, is marked, the components. So the spring face, uh, your ramps, everything else is all lined up with X's. Generally, let's see if this one is. Or if somebody's had this apart and not re remarked it. Well, hard to tell. But before I put it back together, I will clean it, service it, check the ramps, check the rollers, check everything over, and then use it again on the other engine. So here we go. So that's the primary off, in case you guys are wondering how that comes off there. Put that away. And we'll stick that primary bolt in with it, so as not to lose it and lose our parts. And with it I'm going to shut you off for a second because i got to do a few little house cleaning duties here. Alright, so to free up the motor, I need to get this backer plate off this uh, clutch cover backer plate which is not held on by a whole lot of screws but <laughs> that secondary is in the way so we'll take that secondary bolt out and basically the secondary is going to be held on with a keyway or a spline I can't recall on this one this one probably is a keyway it's going to be the same thing you got to hold the rear brake which locks up because your brake is on the uh, your brake disc is on the uh, jack shaft so that just locks it up, holds it tight, take your nut off, throw your bolt out of the secondary. Again, there will be shims, there will probably be a, uh, a spacer inside, in this case there really is not. And then this whole secondary, hopefully you guys got enough light here, will just slide off here. Again, don't lose your spacers. This one's on a spline, so you don't have a key to worry about losing. But later on we'll put that back on there once I take that cover on. Later on when I assemble this whole thing again with a new motor in, I'll show you how to pull the secondary part and clean the secondary and, and service the secondary. But for now, that's off. So on the inner cover, same again. Take the bolts all out. Don't lose them. Try to keep track of where they go. Sometimes some are longer than others. Try to put them back when you're done with them. That seal is in rough shape around that. We'll have to see if we can order a new seal or make one up for this inner clutch cover. It's really chewed up. <laughs> and do you really think these seals will be available? Probably not. So. And we'll end up doing is using a liberal, liberal amount of RTV. Anyway, there you go. That's all pulled out. So that's meeting. As you can see. And if you don't have that seal, what ends up happening is water and mud and dirt get inside the clutch, and uh, and just cause havoc in there. Cause excess wear, belt slippage, everything else. So. Uh, we shall see if something is available. Like I said, if not, it'll get gobbed up pretty good with uh, some RTV. So anyway, that shows you basically the rest of the motor. Here's your starter. I already noticed when I was flipping the other one over, the ring gear for the starter on the other motor. Sounds like it's probably missing a few teeth, or at least one tooth. It's it's or the or the the starter is not thrown out all the way. So. Hard to tell, but I'll end up pulling the other one off and having a look at the ring gear to make sure it's in good shape. If it's not, we'll just switch ring gears between two motors. Um, what else? Here's your ground. Ground goes right to your battery. I don't know if you guys can see that. It'll be a bit dark in here. There's uh, your power supply, your starter. And, uh, huh. that, uh, well, don't know where that's supposed to go. <laughs> I guess we'll see what's missing at the end, huh? Anyways, no worries. So that's basically down to your motor. That's your air intake into the clutch. Uh, can't, sorry, that's either the exhaust or the air intake. I can't recall. Sorry, air intake would be up top, exhaust would be out the, at the bottom there somewhere. 
Um, carburetor. There's your jack shaft. Simple, simple stuff at this point. Just a matter of taking out bolts, etc., etc. All right, so there's your carburetor, standard Makuni. You want to go ahead undo your intake boot. Not all the way, just loosen it off. Undo your intake boot clamp. Undo your box air box clamp. That loosens all that off. Uh, the fuel is already disconnected. Let's get that out of there, out of the way. There might be a little fuel left in the bowl, so it might spill a little bit here. That's not a big deal. <clears throat> Either way. Um, on the other side, let's just swing you around there. So on the other side of the carburetor, you want to do your choke. Oh, what is that? So a half inch wrench. That just unscrews. Pull that right out. Just lay it up somewhere where it's not going to get damaged. Put it out of the way. Don't have to bang against it. We'll have to reset the carburetor later on when we install on the new motor. Back down here. Undo your slide. So what happens here is there's a slide inside that carburetor that moves up and down and it allows air to pass into the carburetor. So the air sucks in through the air box. But basically what happens when you pull the throttle, slide pulls up in the bore of the carburetor, allows air to enter into the intake of the carburetor, creates a venturi effect, and pulls in fuel from the fuel bowl. Pulls it up through the main jet, up through the jet, uh, through the needle jet, uh, past the jet needle, and into the throat of the carburetor and uh, into the cylinder. Pretty simple setup. So basically all the throttle does is varies the amount of uh, air that can enter into the carburetor and thusly brings in more fuel. So I've already loosened that off so there shouldn't be much stopping me from removing it except for who knows what's in the way. It's one of my airlines. Stick that back on before I lose it. It gets plugged up with dirt. This is a, a chain case vent. We'll just stick that out of the way. Turn that off. The slide will pop out. There's a spring that holds the tension on it. We're going to have to drop that down and out of the way first. And to do that, I'm going to have to get a bit in your way. Sorry about that. Same thing. You want to be reasonably delicate. go and then out comes your slide it only goes into the carburetor one way long slot on this side short slot on the other side basically that slot right there that big one if you guys can see that that's your height adjustment for your idle basically all idle adjustment does is it raises the slide up inside the carburetor so same thing as with the choke you're going to want to put that up and out of the way and, and not let it get damaged. Specifically, don't let your jet needle get bent because it may end up hanging up inside the main jet and uh, you'll end up with a uh, stuck wide open, stuck wide open throttle. And I'm pretty sure you don't want that. And if you notice it beforehand, you'll end up having to spend more money on parts and you don't want to do that either. So, how's that sound? Again, before this all goes back together, the whole thing will be cleaned, carburetor will be cleaned, in and out, we'll go through it all. Man, we could have a lot of parts to this video, couldn't we? <laughs> well, that's up to you guys, depending on how many parts you want to see on this. So, I'll just zoom you back out again. There you go. That's what we got going on. Simple enough, huh?
Your intake side is your jet needle. You can see that. A lot of people call it a, a mixture tube. It's actually called, it's actually a, sorry, a needle jet on the inside there. People don't mix them up. <laughs> and your various air passages. Air screw right there. You can see that. There's your idle screw. Easy enough, huh? Just wondering if I could hear that float bobbing up and down there, which I can. So, anyway, I think that's going to be it for tonight. I just have yet to uh, come up with a puzzler for you guys. So, uh, let me come up with that again. Yeah, look at that. See? You guys want to have clean hands when you're doing this kind of stuff? I'm going to wear gloves. <laughs> If you don't care, well then let your hands get filthy dirty. Anyway, I gotta come up with a puzzle for you guys, get this uh, video done up. And that's about all we need to do for today. I think we came a little ways uh, in a very short amount of time. Next will be um, pulling that motor out, basically taking the motor mounts out and uh, doing some cleanup. Uh, a few little checks here and there. And uh, a little uh, ready work, and we'll be good to go on putting that other one in. Anyway. Catch you guys in a bit. Alright guys, so here's the puzzler. I'll try to do one of these every week if it interests you. And if you don't like them, eh, I'll just stop doing them. So this summer when I was on vacation, I had an occasion to go to a yard sale. It was some old house. It had a barn and lots of old junk in there, but I found one interesting item. It was a headlight, and half the lens was painted black. The only thing I noticed was that it was old and that it was a 6-volt headlight, which means it was at least 65 years old. So the question is, why was the headlight painted half black? The hint is where I was. I was on vacation in Cape Cod. The other hint is, you wouldn't be likely to find one of these in, say, Chicago. If you think you know the answer, stick it in the comments. I'll let you know next week and uh, we'll pick the winner. Anyway, guys... Have a great week, and we'll see you again uh, next Monday.